Another latest start, unfortunately. It's 10 o'clock. Not an unpleasant night. Moored next to the sewage works. <laughs> a couple of trains. Went to a bridge. Big one at about half past one in the morning. That must have been carrying lots of nuclear waste and stuff. But uh, we've woken to sunshine. And it does look idyllic, doesn't it? Apart from the sewage works. <laughs> it does look absolutely lovely. We had to close all the windows because there was odd um, mal aromas. <laughs> Moored next to sewage works. Yummy. Hope you're not watching you. I'm not eating your breakfast while you're watching this. But anyway, got about five hours today before we hit Hebden. Oh, this is rather nice. They were building these last time we came through. So that was three years ago. Hey, uh, just saying, they was building these last time I came by. That's lovely. And um, yeah, I don't think they've done a bad job of these. I think that's pretty good. Compared to some of the others that we've seen, I think that they've tried, haven't they? They've got the nice little kind of balcony. Yes, well done. I haven't got a clue where we are. I might have to have a look on the map. Uh, just for the record, I've just had a look on the map. I ain't got a bloody clue where we are. Somewhere between Halifax and Sorby Bridge, which is spelt Sowerby Bridge. Uh, but yeah, quite impressed. That was rather nice. I'm going to say... This isn't where you want to meet a boat coming the other way. We're in Sabi Bridge. And that down there is um, the hire boat fleet of uh, Shire Cruisers. And one of those will have had those six stag do wankers on from yesterday who uh, didn't want to be delayed at a lock so closed it on us we have a couple of locks and then a rate treat we have the deepest lock in the world all right not the world but the deepest lock on the inland waterways, Tuel Lock. It is T U E L. And it's a right bit scary. And you've got a bendy tunnel to get into it. Please don't let there be a load of hire boats coming down here now. I think we're alright. Most of them, I think they have to hand the boat back at half nine or ten, so they'll be over there handing the boat back. This doesn't seem as busy here as it usually is. Okay, right. onward. There's one of them strange ones, and another strange one, and then... Hmm. That's a great shame, isn't it? A little bit of paint, that would have been fine. Interesting one with that big round window. Porthole. They're called portholes in boats. But that is a... That is a great shame, that. Oh, a 
forgot to mention. Should have mentioned it in the last lock, lock number one. We're now on the Rochdale Canal. No longer on the Calder and Hebel. And the Rochdale goes right down through the centre of Manchester, actually. The last nine locks go through right through the centre of Manchester and are known, helpfully, as the Rochdale Line. That goes down past Canal Street.
big lock. Oh, oh, get out. <laughs> I feel small in here. I'm sure sometimes that one of those locks on the air, or the air and calder, are bigger than deeper than this, but apparently not. This is the deepest lock. Got the GoPro on in case I get too scared. Chul, Chul Lane Lock, the deepest lock, deepest inland lock, whatever, and decent volunteer. I don't know, I think one was not a volunteer and the other one was a volunteer. But it's nice when you find volunteers who, I don't know, are human rather than just. Anyway, been there, not going to do that one again. Sobby Bridge. Um, we're running a little bit late, it's 20 to, 20 to noon, 20 to 12, so it's taken us a little bit longer than I anticipated it to get here. Probably hit Hebden somewhere around half two, I should think, maybe three o'clock, unless I really put my pedal to the metal or the handle to the nothing rhymes with handle well I suppose it's not just hirers who can be uh, challenging owners can as well if you're gonna tow another boat or you know, breast up to another boat to get it from place A to place B Don't get pissed first. For the fuck's sake. Ho oh, hum. We're on our way to Hebden Bridge. Absolutely stunning. Oh, what can you say? I hope we're still in Yorkshire. <laughs> I can say, how beautiful is Yorkshire? But even if we're not in Yorkshire, how beautiful is it? Wouldn't it be nice to live over there? Probably find that's all owned by some Russian oligarch or something because we don't own anything in this country now you know there's an interesting story came out yesterday about an Afghan living near the submarine base in Scotland renting a farm because he likes being a farmer and, and the irony of it was that he's just been evicted because um, the locals think he's a security hazard. I'd like to think that, you know, MI5, MI6, all of the various security agencies we've got would have been onto that. But he's been evicted by the owner of the land, who's Iranian. Pointless speculating whether or not the Canal and River Trust are going to fix that. I suppose they'll wait until that entire section breaches and floods whatever's down there. Hey, what happens is the you, know, you can see where they've repaired it here. The, the water gradually erodes under here and then suddenly it just goes plonk like that and this stretch looks particularly neglected in that respect and even this protective piling here 
in fact it's not even really protective piling I don't think is it it's just a not even sure what you'd call it a bit of metal splattered down Anyway, two more locks. Is it two more locks? I don't know. You know, two more locks and a bendy tunnel, which I hate. A tunnel which always tries to remove navigation lights because it bends in the middle. No, really, it does. I don't like it. Now, this water level does seem a lot lower than I remember it. Maybe that's just me. Bendy tunnel. the bend I don't like this tunnel. I don't like this tunnel! I don't like it! <laughs> but I haven't bashed into it yet! It's the first time for everything, boys and girls. Me getting through this tunnel without touching the side. Actually, I've done it before, just not very often. Hey, would you look at that then? There you go, bendy tunnel. And we're through without contact. Round of applause please, boys and girls, round of applause. I think this is definitely one of those stretches where if you, uh, if you were a broad beam coming down here, you've kind of like committed. It's not wide enough for uh, a broad beam and narrow boat. You could sort of pass over narrow boats, all right, but be a bit iffy. You'd have to you have to back all the way up, or I suppose do what they suggest you do in Wales on the Langochlan, which is to uh, send someone ahead and radio back. Well, not radio back now, obviously. In the old days, now you'd use your cellular telephone. There's a few interesting boats on this stretch. I'll come back when we're near them. Look, this water level is down. This is really down a lot. And it looks like they've, um, they've repaired a breach here just by chucking some clay onto it. And there's a few other bits up here where water issues were a significant factor this year. is very shallow. You don't want to get stuck there. I 
think they shut off the other side of Hebden Bridge back in the summer again because of water management issues which won't have pleased the hire company very much I think it's Bronte boats that hire out of Hebden I don't think they got many I know they got a couple of day boats but I don't know how many uh, proper hire boats they got Uh, this one here was here when we first came over at Rochdale, which was 14 odd years ago, might have been longer. So it doesn't look like it's moved. And I know it's, it looks a bit odd, but I think along with that, it's got a load of character apart from just obviously being black. I really like it. I'd go as far as to say it's one of my favourite boats on the Rochdale. Just make sure I'm not going to smack into the bridge. Yeah. So this is our, um, our last lock now and we should be finding somewhere to moor. That woman's weird. For the avoidance of doubt, <laughs> this is how low the water is. So they'll have left that there, I don't know when, and the water's dropped, and they're now sat on bottom. They're a long way from home as well. So the question is, what's it going to be like up where we more normally? Maybe. I bet they don't know, you know. It may be that we have to moor further out, get the dog on and off using gangplank. That'll be fun. So we're usually more up near that bridge, which is by the Trades Club. We'll see.